Today, I'm gonna to share with you some online course creation tips that I think will help you whether it's your first time creating an online course or your 10th time. I'm Natalie Lucier, and I've been creating online courses for over a decade, successfully. I've made over six figures from selling my own courses and over a million dollars selling other people's courses too. And now I run my own software company called Access Ally, which is all about online course creation and membership sites and communities. So I'll talk to you about that a little bit more later, but first let's dive into the most important thing about creating online courses and it is actually getting them done and out into the world. So if you're anything like me, procrastination can rear its head, especially when you have a big project, you have high expectations, and you're a bit of a perfectionist. So I get it, and I think it's totally normal for us to want to put everything we possibly can inside of our online courses because we have so much that we want to give to the world and we have so much that we want to teach and share. But here's the thing, when you're building an online course and procrastination is keeping you from actually creating it and finishing it, you're not doing anyone a service at all because it's not out there helping people right now. So here are a couple of things to help you fight the procrastination instinct that comes up when you say, I'm gonna sit down and work on my online course. So the first thing is to remember that it is not ever finished. And that's the thing that when I was first starting out in my online courses, I thought that my course had to be totally polished and perfect. And if it wasn't perfect, people would not purchase it. But what I found in my very first launch is that it didn't matter how much work I put into it. It was a lot more about the marketing and making sure that what I was selling is actually something that people wanted to buy. So you could work in your office or your cave or your basement and wherever it is that you create your online courses from for years and have an amazing course ready to go. But if you haven't talked to actual people yet, then you don't know if it's exactly what people want to buy from you. So that's the first thing. It does not have to be complete and completely done or perfect because with an online course, you can always come back, improve it, make it better over time. And even with videos, I feel like videos have a lot of pressure built into them because it takes so long to set up and to record. And then if you have to re-record or change something in a video, it can feel really daunting, but it's totally doable. You could even add a little note at the end of your video or below your video inside of your membership site that tells people, hey, here's an extra download or here's an extra add-on video or something like that. So you don't have to feel like whatever you create has to be thrown to the garbage if it's not exactly right or exactly what you want to say in the way you wanted to say it. So that's the first thing, take the pressure off full permission to do the best you can with what you have now. You will come back and redo your content. That's just the nature of online courses because things are changing, you'll get questions from people and you'll be able to clarify over time. But if you don't get it out there in the first place, you won't have that feedback, you won't make any money and you won't be able to make it better with the real world feedback that you need to make it better. So the second thing about procrastination is that a lot of times it's all in your own head. Head. And I know this personally because I procrastinate about stuff all the time because I have this vision in my head of what it's going to look like, what it should look like. And then when what I start creating doesn't look exactly like what's in my head, I give up and I say, you know what? Maybe I'm just not good enough. Maybe I don't have what it takes right now. Maybe I need to put in more hours, put in more years of experience before I'm the one to create this content or to create this course. Again, permission to go out there and actually interact with customers and with students because they will tell you that yes, what you do have is valuable and it will help them. And it doesn't have to look like what version you have in your head, it can just look great to them. And that to me is a biggest mind shift that you need to make to get over procrastinating on creating an online course. Now, if you're procrastinating because you're not sure which tools you'll use or how you'll do that, keep watching this video and I'm gonna share with you everything that you need to create your course once you get going and you stop procrastinating. My final tip to help you bust through procrastination is really to start with the smallest step. So you're already on track. You're watching this video right now and you know you have a course inside of you that you wanna work on. 
on. So what is the smallest step that you can break it down to that you will do next? And here are some steps that you can follow. So let's just pick one for you that you'll work on today or tomorrow and don't put it off till next week. So here's the next thing for creating an online course that I highly, highly recommend before you do any of the other work that's involved in creating a course. And that is customer research. So customer research is something that can feel like, again, another procrastination task. It might feel like, oh, I'm doing customer research. I'm not working on my course. Or I have to do customer research perfectly right. Otherwise, I won't build the right course. But here's the thing. If you talk to three real people and you ask them questions about your topic and the things that they might be struggling with in relation to your topic, I guarantee you, you will be ahead of 80% of all the other people out there who want to create an online course. Because that's the hardest part. It's truly interacting with other humans who will be taking your online course that really stops us in a lot of cases because again that perfectionism comes in and that makes us feel like oh i'm not sure if i have what they need but if you actually talk to someone if you actually ask them questions and see if your advice and your ideas could help them then you know you're on the right track or not and you're not going to waste your time creating a course that nobody wants to buy now if you're not sure who these people should be that you're going to interview and do some customer research with definitely watch my next video in this series all about how to pre-sell your online course so you actually have those people lined up and ready to go to ask these questions of. Now, while I absolutely want you to talk to real humans and do this customer research, there are other ways to do customer research that involve just sleuthing online too. So maybe looking through forums or groups or other places that people congregate around your topic to see what they struggle with or what questions come up a lot. So those are totally valid customer research ways too. And I don't want to discount them, but I just don't want you to spend a ton of time doing that and feeling like you're just holding off on actually creating your course. Now, the next step in the process is to outline your course. And I am a huge fan of mind maps. So here's why I really recommend that you mind map your course and how to do it. So when you're outlining your online course, what you wanna do is turn off the internet, go to a quiet place, shut the door, have a pen and paper, maybe a notebook and a couple of other um, things to kind of help you jot your memory. If you have notes or customer research, you can bring that with you too. And then you wanna start with the title or the core topic of your online course and fan out from there. In the first step, what you wanna do is just brainstorm on every possible thing that you could include in your online course. And then just add bubbles as you start to add more topics that are related to each other that kind of lead one into the other. And then you'll start to see some patterns emerge in your mind map. So mind mapping is so simple and I really, really love it because it helps you just get everything out on paper. It doesn't have to look clean. It doesn't have to have a specific order. And then from there, you can start to highlight the things that you know you will want to include inside of your course. And then you can also start to see some patterns emerging. So for example, you might notice which things might be a module and which things might be lessons and subtopics within a module. You might also see things that would be a great exercise for people to do on their own inside of your course. You might see things that would be better done visually or done more audibly. And you'll start to see some things that kind of come to the surface around what you wanna create for your online course. Now, the other thing I wanna highly recommend that you do is go through with a bit more of a critical mind and see what you can leave out of your online course. I know it's crazy. You don't want to put everything that you know inside of your online course because it will overwhelm your students. So you really want to go through and cross off anything that would not make the cut. And here's the good news is that you don't have to hide those content ideas away forever. You could actually use those as your pre-launch content ideas. You could use those as blog posts or video topics that are related to your course, but that just don't make sense to include in your course. So I don't know if you noticed, but that was a little bit of a stealth tip to help you stop procrastinating. Because once you have your outline that you created without the distractions of the internet and your phone and all of these things, and you are so far ahead of the game that you're almost done with creating the hardest part of your course. The next online course creation tip I have for you is to decide on your delivery model. So you might be thinking, oh, well, most online courses are video format, so I should do mine that way too. But here's the great news. It's your online course. You get to decide how 
how you want to deliver it. Do you want to deliver it live on Zoom calls? Do you want to deliver it in written format and downloadable PDFs? Do you want to deliver it with a lot of quizzes or a lot of progress tracking? Do you want to deliver it in video or just audio? Or do you want to do a mix of all? So it's completely up to you and I highly recommend that you think about what you enjoy creating as well as how you think your students will best learn. So there is this concept of learning styles and I think it's great for you to consider your students in this equation but also not discount how you like to create content. And if you absolutely hate to do slides or written content then you don't have to focus on those at all. It's completely in your control. Now my recommendation if this is your first online course and it's the first time you're running anything like this is to do your courses live and that means delivering the content live on a video or a zoom call and that means your people will actually ask you questions and help you improve the content before you solidify it into more of a formalized version of your course now if this is the second time or the third time that you're running a course you can absolutely pre-record your content and upload it that way too now if you're anything like me creating slides causes a lot of anxiety and procrastination and I'm going to share with you some of my favorite tips for making the slide process a lot easier and a lot more fun. Now there are tons of different tools you can use to create slides from Microsoft PowerPoint, Apple Keynote, Google Slides, and what I'm gonna recommend is a little bit different. I'm gonna recommend Canva and here's why. Because they have both free options and paid options and there are so many amazing designs to choose from. And when you're able to separate the look and feel of your slides from the content, all you have to do is put in your ideas and your thoughts and the things you're teaching and not focus so much on making everything pixel perfect and looking good. And again, perfectionism is where a lot of procrastination comes in. So this is another way to slay perfectionism and procrastination from the get-go. Creating your slides for your online courses with Canva is so simple. You just log into your Canva account. They both have free and paid accounts. Click on presentations and then decide if you want to do a talking presentation where you'll have video on top or just a presentation like a regular one and I'm gonna go ahead and choose that one and then we can look here through all kinds of different really really nice presentation styles to choose from so let's say I like the creative presentation ideas so let's say that I have an online course about gardening I'm gonna go ahead and apply all 10 pages and you can see here that I can edit the pages separately and it's so simple to change titles you can obviously resize things. You can change fonts. You can also sometimes change colors. So for example, maybe I don't want this brown, I can choose a different color. And then the same goes for replacing images. So you can actually find images that are within Canva. So I can search for a garden image and replace that T image. And maybe that's more in line with what I'm talking about in this course, for example. You can also upload your own images and have photos that you can find again through Canva. You can add text and your own logo so you can upload your logo and you can have all of your branding information in one place. So it's super easy to add and to put in all the right places. And then also if you wanted to change the template styles, you could go ahead and do that here. You can shuffle. So if you wanted to keep the general look and feel, but change the colors a little bit, you can come and do that. So just in case you're worried that other people might have the same design as you, this is a great way to update all of the look and feel across all of the different pages. So now you can see it's updated across all the different templates in here. So I absolutely recommend using Canva for creating your slides for your online courses. And when you're ready, you could technically just present just like this by going full screen into Canva. And that's a great way using Camtasia or ScreenFlow to record your screen. You can also share. And then what that means is you can download. You can also download this as a PDF, which is really the way to go for most people, but you could also export it to a different version. If you want to do just an animated GIF or something like that, you can go ahead and do that too. Uh, but yeah, you could also use Canva itself to present and record. So this is a great way if you don't want to upgrade to a paid version of Camtasia or ScreenFlow and you do have Canva already, it's everything built in that you might want to have here. So super recommend Canva 
for this. So let's say you're doing slides and you're gonna pre-record a few videos. So here you might be wondering, what tool should I use to record myself talking through my slides? Well, you could do something like a Zoom call and record it that way, but that's actually really complicated and you need to have internet and it might actually decrease the quality of your videos. So I think it's much, much better to use a dedicated software like Camtasia or ScreenFlow. Both of these are amazing options for recording yourself talking through slides and they can do all kinds of things like even record your video at the same time on camera and really help you bring in different elements and even edit your videos at the end. Now, speaking of editing, I know this is probably one of the biggest pain points for a lot of people when it comes to editing the content for their online courses, especially if you're doing video. So you have a couple of options and one of them is to hire it out. So there are amazing editors all over the world that you can hire to really trim up and make the best of your video content so that when you mess up or if you have to redo something, they will come in, clean that up and make sure that everything looks great from beginning to end in each of your videos. Now, if you're doing video editing yourself because you're not quite there yet for hiring it out, I totally get it. And here are some tips to help you create your online courses without spending a ton of time on editing. So the first one is when you mess up, when you're recording yourself, make sure to pause for a couple of seconds. And this will help a lot when you come back to editing. So you can come in and find those pauses and then just cut them out. But that's a lot of work too. So there's a great tool called ReCut. And what you do is you add your video to this tool, you decide how long of a pause you want to track, and then it will cut out all those pauses. And then when you're coming through and watching your video again, you can just delete the sections that you messed up in and it will continue right where you started up again. So it is such an amazing, invaluable tool that I highly recommend, even if it's not for course videos and if it's for YouTube videos, it is super, super helpful. And if you are doing your editing yourself, again, to get over that procrastination part, just start. What I found is that if I think about editing my videos, I really don't want to do it. And I can think of a million other things I could be doing that are more pleasant or feel higher priority. But when I sit down and I just start with the first two minutes of a video, I'm able to usually get through the whole thing much faster. And I overcome that hump of, I don't really want to do this. So that's my tip for overcoming procrastination when it comes to editing your video content. Finally, you're at the finish line. You've created all of your content or a good amount of it. And now it's time to start putting it inside of your online course platform. So the great news is there are tons of options for creating your online course and choosing a platform. But the downside is that you can procrastinate choosing your course platform too. So here's what I'm going to recommend. If it's your very first time launching an online course, then I recommend something that is super affordable, easy to set up so that you're not spending all of your time creating all of the stuff around your online course platform and you just hit the ground running, make some money, and then you can reinvest that money into a better online course platform that does all the things you want it to do. So obviously I'm biased. I'm the founder of Access Ally, which is a WordPress-based online course and membership community solution. So I highly recommend Access Ally if it's not your first course. I know it sounds crazy. And yes, if you are super keen and motivated and you're a little bit of a techie, then Access Ally would be great for your first time. But if you want to just hit the ground running, get your course out there, start getting students, then I highly recommend one of the other options, which I'll link to below. So if you are ready to really scale and take it to that next level, then Access Ally is absolutely the choice for you. I call it the forever solution because once you try Access Ally and you realize the power of what you can do with it from bulk course enrollment, progress tracking, quizzing, automation, gamification, there are just so many amazing things you can do in that platform, but I don't want you to get bogged down in all of the options and bells and whistles that you can do with Access Ally. So I highly recommend you just start using your outline that you created earlier in your mind map to create your modules, your lessons. And then once you have those in there, then you can start to add your videos and other content. So you might upload those directly to YouTube, Wistia or Vimeo. Maybe you'll upload them to Amazon videos or directly to your course platform, depending on what you're using. Now, here's my final online course creation tip for you that will save you so many headaches that I wish I knew before I launched my first online course. And it is to make a test purchase and possibly more than one. So here's the thing. If you set up everything just right, then you can cross your fingers and hope that when you send that first launch email that everyone will be able to sign up perfectly well from the get go. 
but you never know. There could be a missing integration between your email marketing system and your course platform. There could be a typo in that first welcome email that people get. There could be something not set up properly with your payment gateway. So you really wanna test your ordering process and make sure that it's set up properly so you don't lose any sales or any sleep over this whole launch process. Now I really want you to watch the next video all about pre-selling your online courses so you don't get stuck in any of these steps and procrastinate even longer. I'm Natalie Lucier, founder of Access Ally. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you subscribe for even more online course creation tips.